This is going to be a continuation of talking about our object states and the different types of object healths. For this video, we're going to be jumping in the command line and walking through a couple different commands. vSAN 6.6 introduced a bunch of debug commands. For this video, we're going to be talking about objects, we're going to be talking about VMDKs, and we're going to be talking about resyncs. So let's look at that object command first. Our object command has a couple different options. We can do health, list, or overview. Let's start out with our health command. And this one's got a couple more options, so I'm gonna kind of walk through each one of those options. But ultimately, we wanna to get to our health summary get. And that allows us to see what is going on with the state of our objects. Are they healthy? Are they inaccessible? Reduce availability, et cetera, et cetera. What is the health of our objects? We can see we've got seven healthy objects. I'm gonna put host to in maintenance mode with our no data migration option. This will cause us to have an outage because our FTT of zero VMDK is located on host two. If we rerun the command, we now see we've got five objects in a reduced availability state with no rebuild delay timer. We can see we've got one object that's currently healthy and one object that's currently inaccessible. Let's use a few other object commands to investigate our state. I'm gonna use the object overview command. We can see we've got six objects currently listed. You might be thinking, wait a minute, we should have seven. And that is correct, but that seventh object is currently inaccessible. Because it's inaccessible, we can't query that object to see what is its health status. In the second column, we've got our group UID. We're not gonna be diving into the group UID. We might in a future video, but we can think of the group UID is, what does this object belong to? This object belongs to our monster VM. This object belongs to our storage policy. So that's just a really brief overview of our group UID. Next is our version. This tells us what disk format version are we using. In this case, we're using version 11. If we upgraded to 12 or upgraded to 13, our objects would also upgrade and that version would increment. Next is our size and our used. Our size is how big can this VMDK be? So for example, that second from the bottom, that's our 500 gig VMDK that we created earlier, but we're only using 0.02 gigs of it. Next, we have our storage policy. This is our storage policy-based management, which you've got mostly RAID 1 objects and that one RAID 5 object. That was our OS drive for our storage policy VM. Next to it, we can see the number of healthy components. In a healthy environment, we would have three out of three, four out of four, five out of five, et cetera, et cetera. But every component or every object except for that top one is decremented by one, so we're not quite in a healthy state. Let's use another command to do a little further investigation. We're gonna be using our object list command. At the top, we've got our object UID and the version of our object. I wanna call it our third item. This tells us the health of this particular object, and we'll identify what this object here is in a moment. Below that, we've got our policy information, and I wanna call that the host failures to tolerate. This is a little bit of a throwback term to our older versions of vSAN, but it's kind of already in the code, it's already there, but this is our failures to tolerate. We're tolerating a single failure in the environment. Underneath that, we've got our profile name. What did we call this policy? In this case, we called it RAID 1. And underneath that, we've got our stripe width. So this tells us how is this policy configured. Under our configuration section, we can see we've got our RAID 1 object with a couple of RAID 0 components underneath of this. This is our monster VMDK, our 500 gig VMDK with a component 1.1 and 1.2 and 2.1 and 2.2 that we talked about in our storage policy video. And I wanna point out a couple of health states. We can see our component state that first component 1.1 is active and component 1.2 is also active. But then when we look at component 2.1 and 2.2, we can see they're both listed as absent. It tells us these components were sitting on host 2 and they're no longer available, which causes them to be in an absent state. For our witness, we can see our witness is still in an active state because that's because it's on host 4. And for type, this is how I know it's our monster VMDK because our type says VDisk and our path says monster VM VMDK. This tells me it's a VMDK object. I wanna call out one more object before we move on to a different command. And if you look towards the bottom, we can see the type is VM namespace. This is a namespace object. If you look at the path, we can see this is for our storage policy VM. We can also see our group UID, all with our directory name, which is storage policy VM. So we can see what it looks like when it's a VMDK object and a namespace object. Let's move on to a different command. We're gonna be using our VMDK list command next. And this one's a little confusing because you're saying we wanna see VMDK list, but yet we're seeing the output of all of our objects. This is a way to see a condensed version of what we just saw. 
So down the top, we've got our object UID, followed by our health status, our type, that first one is a namespace object, followed by the path and the directory name. Looking at that second object, one thing I want to call out is the directory name. You'll see it's NA. We only show the directory path if it's a namespace object. So you can see that this one is a VMDK. It's a VDisk, or at least type VDisk. And the path says it's our monster VMDK. So just another way we can see the output in a little bit more condensed version. There are two more commands I want to talk about before we wrap up this video. And they're both related to resync. We'll kick off a resync if we have an object that's not in a healthy state. We just put host two in maintenance mode with no data migration. Once that timer elapses, we'll kick off a resync and rebuild those components if we can. So with our RAID 5 object, we know we can't build them somewhere else, but our RAID 1 FTT of one object, we need a minimum of three ESXi host. We have four, so we could build that somewhere else in the environment. So the first command I wanna use is our resync summary get command. The first line tells us how many objects are resyncing at this particular moment. Right now, we don't have a resync running, so we're seeing the output as zero. Once that timer elapses, that 60 minute timer, we would put all the objects into the resync that could be rebuilt, and we would kick off a resync. So for our RAID 5 object, we know we need a minimum of 46 iHost. This environment only has 46 iHost, so we can't rebuild that object. But for our RAID 1 FTT of one object, we could build that somewhere else in the environment because we have four hosts, and we only need a minimum of three hosts. The last two lines tells us how much data is left. Is that 15 gigs, is that 100 gigs, or is that more? But this command just gives us an overview. It doesn't tell us what's in the resync. And that's where our resync list command comes in. This command is going to be pretty boring for this video, but if we did have a resync running, we would see a list of UIDs that will tell us what's currently resyncing. If I'm working with a customer that has a resync running, one of the things that I like to do is keep an eye on that resync and making sure it's progressing. We can use a command watch that will automatically refresh the command for us and we can put in a separate window. So I'm going to type in watch dash lowercase n and then an interval. Let's say 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds, this command will refresh itself, followed by our resync summary get command. And this will kick off a refresh of that command every 10 seconds. Sometimes the command takes longer to return from 10 seconds, but every time it has a cycle, every time 10 seconds elapses, it'll kick off a resync. So you may just need to adjust it to 20 seconds or 30 seconds, whatever works for your environment. But this is a way we can keep an eye on that resync as it's progressing. So at this point, I think it's a good time to wrap up this video. We start out with our object set of commands. To understand what was the overall health of our environment, at least until we put host to a maintenance mode. Once we put host to a maintenance mode, we use our object overview command and our object list command to see what was the impact of putting that host in maintenance mode. From there, we looked at our VMDK list, which is just a condensed version of our object list command to see what was the health states and what were the paths and the types of those objects. We then finished up by looking at our resync commands, understanding how much data was in the resync and what objects were in the resync. I hope you found this video informative. I'd like to thank you for watching.